Hey everybody, how's it going? Hope you're having a lovely day. So a lot of people in my recent AMA videos have said, I'm starting a business, do you have a piece of business advice for me? And I usually don't have advice for generalized situations, I usually have advice for specific situations. It's very little advice that I have in general for running a business. Today I'm going to give you a piece, and I didn't realize how important this was until I read it in this one study. I promise. I promise, pinky swear, this is not becoming a red pill dating YouTube channel. You're just going to have to trust me on this one because you're going to think it is when I start reading this study from the American Psychological Association before I get to my point. This is a great study to jump off from to get to my point, which is why I'm going to be using it. This was published very recently. It says, the importance of physical attractiveness and ambition and intelligence to the mate choices of women and their parents. The abstract, when women make mate choices, they face potential conflicts with their parents. Evolutionary theory predicts and prior research confirms that daughters value physical attractiveness more than their parents do when considering a partner for their daughters. Across conditions, both daughters and parents rated the ambitious and intelligent man as a more desirable dating partner than the more attractive man. However, when asked to choose the best mate for their daughters, both daughters and and their parents chose the more attractive man as the best long-term dating partner for their daughters, regardless of the ascribed traits. Furthermore, daughters and parents' choices corresponded 79% of the time. Physical attractiveness may be more important to both daughters and parents than self-reported responses suggest, aka the people in the study were saying we care about the personality and the ambitiousness and the intelligence. But in reality, when they were actually making their own decisions, they were choosing the people that were attractive, regardless of the other traits. Now, this goes back to something that uh, Hugh Laurie, the guy that played House in the Fox TV show series called House, used to say all the time, which is that everybody lies. And this can be applied to so much more than just dating and marriage. And I'm going to segue this into business. My general piece of business advice is as follows, and it applies to business and life. Look at where people are spending their money what they're paying attention to, and what they're investing time in. Never listen to what they say, because what they say is often a lie. People lie with their mouths, but they tell the truth with their wallets and how they spend their time. I'll give you three examples of this just with my own business. So I started this business literally working out of the park because I couldn't afford something better. So what I used to do is I used to have a little setup that I created in the park. I have a little bag with all my parts, and because I wasn't paying rent, Everything was so much cheaper this way. I wasn't paying three to $10,000 a month in rent and everything else in New York City necessary to have a business. And I remember asking a lot of people at the time when I realized that, you know, all these places are charging like four to $800 for what amounts to a $58 part in 10 minutes of time. Do you think that people would be open to visiting me, you know, at 19 years old in my basketball shorts in the park and having work done there if they could save a week of turnaround time because I stocked the part and if they could save a few hundred dollars. And 100% of the people that I asked thought, yeah, I don't think anybody's gonna spend money on that. I wouldn't take my $3,000 machine to somebody in the park to have it fixed just to save one or $200. Yet in reality, this was a very viable business model. Here's a picture of me back when I still had a hairline, and me with my little Shure E3C earbud, because even back then, even back 15 years ago, I was a fanboy of Shure inner monitors, and that was me fixing something in the park. That, that picture is about 15 years old at this point, and this was a very viable business for me. So people said, I would not trust somebody in the park with my stuff, no way, I'm not going to do that to save $100. In reality, the opposite was the case. I very rarely, if ever, had customers ever complain about my work arrangements, and they were more than happy to spend $160 with me rather than $350 at Laptop MD or whatever, especially since I was able to get them the part faster because the money that I was not wasting on rent, I was investing into stocking parts so I could offer instant turnaround. So everybody that I knew, friends, family, coworkers, said I would never do this, yet simultaneously, all these people were showing up for it. Second business example, I decided a few years later to start a screen supply company where I would sell screens to other businesses and people that wanted to fix their own devices. At the time, the most popular places to get screens back in 2009 through 2011 were places called Bliss Computers, Screen Aid, Y'all Store. These places, in my opinion, were horrible. They would often sell grade A minus merchandise to save a dollar or two, where you'd have stuck pixels. Sometimes the part would not work because of crappy packaging. And as a result, you would have to RMA the part send it back. Now, in the repair industry, when you have to send something back, you have to tell your customer, hey, I know I told you this would take three days, but because I have to wait five days to send the bad part I bought back, 
and five days to get a new one, your three-day repair is now a 13-day repair. And this will often result in the customer being very mad at you because again, from the customer's point of view, you should be stocking this part if you're offering this as a repair service. I went over that in this video that I highly suggest you watch if you have a repair shop. People expect you to stock parts. It is very bad to be ordering one part for one customer if this is a service that you advertise because if that part is bad, now you're screwed. You can blame the vendor, but your customer is gonna blame you because you're the one offering the service. Anyway, I decided that I was gonna listen to what so many people were saying, which is I would pay extra to get a screen in good packaging or just know that it was pre-tested or to know that if I had a problem with it, that I could get a, a new screen overnighted to me. So I decided when I started my supply company, I decided to have two separate choices for my customers. Behind door number one was the normal system that everybody used. Behind door number two, for four additional dollars for your part, I would allow you to get access to next day standard overnight shipping if you had a problem with your screen. So instead of you having to file, fill out an RMA form, send it back, and then I will send you a replacement, the moment you file your RMA without you sending back the part to me, which means you could, could be scamming me for all I know and getting two free screens, I would standard overnight your replacement with a label in the box to send the bad part back to me so that you did not have to wait so that your customer would not have to wait at all. I would double box the screen to ensure that it got to you even if the postman stepped on it over and over again it would get there in good condition and I would personally plug it into a computer myself to ensure that there were zero stuck pixels on the screen and that it worked before I sent it out to you. For those benefits, you would pay four extra dollars. And both of these accounts on eBay, Amazon, everywhere had amazing, very, very good, high quality feedback. Everybody told me I would be willing to pay a lot of extra money to get this basic, basic benefit. And when I actually did this in reality, the reality was that I was getting about 400 to 1,000 sales per day from the normal screen selling account, 15 sales a month from the one where it was four extra dollars for all these benefits. So all these repair shops told me, man, I wish I could just pay a little bit extra and know that what I'm getting is good for, you know, just those cases where I didn't stock the part, where if I had a problem, like, you know, I would get a new screen delivered immediately where it's pre-tested, double boxed, all that kind of stuff. I offered that for four extra dollars. And you have to understand, this was, these, these were like $80 parts that repair shops were installing for customers for 300 to $400. So they had a three to $400 profit margin and most of them were not willing to spend an additional $4 to get it double boxed, pre-tested, guaranteed no stuck pixels. And if anything doesn't work, I will standard overnight it to you before you send the old one back. Everybody said that this is what they want. And then when I give them the options, 400 to 1,000 a day, choose option A, 15 a month, choose option B. Third example, when it comes to RAM upgrades, I had so many people telling me years ago with the soldered on RAM on MacBooks, I wish that you offered an upgrade service. I would pay for it even if it cost more than Apple's option because I, you know, a lot of people buy the too low when they buy the device. And since they can't upgrade it, they have to replace the entire board, which is very expensive if they want more. So I decide fine. So I order the spools of RAM from Micron. I get these spools of RAM in and it was about $179 part cost upgrade for each customer. And then obviously I have to have a technician take the board out, solder the new RAM on, reprogram the BIOS, change a few strap resistors, because you can't just solder the new RAM on. You either have to change some strap resistors or depending on the model of the machine, reprogram the SPI ROM in order for it to actually see the new RAM. I do all of this work and I was offering it for about $325, $350 at the time. And considering you know the amount of work involved, store in Midtown Manhattan, part is 179 bucks, that wasn't that bad. Virtually nobody wanted it. I kept lowering the price once I realized, okay, let's just get rid of the spool of 100 chips that I already bought. We lowered it to 300 to 250 and like, I think I used this once. In three years, I used this once. That spool is probably still sitting in the basement of 141 West 27th Street. I didn't even bother taking it with me because I, no, nobody was interested in the upgrade. So many people were telling me I would pay for this, Lewis. I'd love to pay for this. And then when I actually start offering it as a service, nobody wants it. Nobody's willing to pay for it. The lesson in all three of these is that people will lie about what it is that they want. And oftentimes they're not lying to you. What they're doing is they're lying to themselves and then telling you the truth as they see it. They lie to themselves because at the end of the day, do you really want to admit in the case of this article? Do you really want to admit that if you had to choose between somebody who is ambitious, intelligent, good personality, successful in their field and well-respected, or somebody who's hot, but you know, isn't really well respected, lives in their parents' basement or whatever, like that you would choose the latter. Would you want to admit that you're shallow? Probably not. And it's not even something that you may lie about to other people. You may lie to yourself because you don't want to believe that you're shallow. And it's just one of those things where like, I hear that so many times. I want somebody who's ambitious, who's just nice. I'm a personality girl. And then you see who they go out with. Are you lying to me or are you lying to yourself? Everybody knows somebody like this. Everybody. 
How many of you know a guy that says, this is what I want out of a woman, and then they date the exact opposite? Somebody who is psychotic, controlling, and emotionally unwell, simply because they came on to them in a certain way or have sex with them in the manner that they wanted. There are so many examples of this. There are countless examples of people saying they want something and then actually going for something else. And it's not because they're lying to you, it's because they're lying to themselves. Who wants to admit that they're shallow? Who wants to admit that they're cheap? Who wants to admit that they don't necessarily value their customer enough to spend a couple of extra dollars to ensure that the part that they should have had in stock anyway actually works when it shows up, much less to admit that I'm too cheap to stock parts in general so that I don't have this problem to begin with. Most people don't want to admit this stuff about themselves. They don't want to admit that with their $3,000 device that they would be willing to meet some rando dude in the park that doesn't have any sort of business reputation just to save $100 over going a laptop MD. They don't want to admit that. But when it comes down to it, when it's time to pay the brass tax, when it's time to open their wallet, when it's time for their rhetoric and their rubber to hit the road, that's when the rhetoric changes, when it's time for them to choose with their own money. And that's a very important thing for you to understand as a business owner. Because if you start investing in certain areas of your company, or you start deciding to offer certain services, or even start a business based on what people tell you they want, you could become massively, massively screwed, and you could have a massive malinvestment where you have invested incorrectly based on what people told you they wanted rather than investing based on what people actually want. I don't invest in my business based on what people tell me they'd like. I invest in my business based on where people actually spend their money. What are you willing to spend money on? What are you willing to spend time on? What are you willing to pay attention to? What are you willing to invest in? That is what I care about. What you tell me you want, what you say would be nice, to have, what you tell me somebody should offer this, I never listen to this shit, ever, because 100% of the time that I have listened to what people tell me what they want, rather than what they actually do, focusing on their actions, focusing on where they pay their attention, time, and money, I got screwed. And it's true. Everybody lies. They lie with their mouth, they tell the truth with their wallet and their attention. That's it for today, and as always, I hope you learned something. I'm curious to see how many people actually got this far into the video. Knowing YouTube comments, there's a fair chance that I'm going to get a bunch of people saying, I'm subscribing, when did this become a Red Pill channel? <laughs> on, a, on a business advice video because I was reading this study. We'll see. We'll see. It'll be fun. Read the pinned comment. It'll be something juicy. Anyway, that's it for today. And as always, I hope you learned something. I'll see you all in the next video. Bye now. And best of luck with your businesses.